walk and look at some of the. Uh... I'm gonna walk around the show and just do some uh, little highlights, little clips, and uh, see what we can find here for new products. Already got some cool stuff, cool conversations with some companies, so I'll tell you about that later. So here's the latest Tirana, the AMG project boat. 6.4 VRs, obviously. It's great. This one looks cool. I like the white, white and black, and then the gold AMG graphics. Looks pretty cool. I mean, it's a absolute beast. Not my cup of tea necessarily, but I mean, after talking to the guys at Cigarette, though, it's, this is the. This is the market. People want to pack tons of people on their boat. They went, they're going all out on center consoles and sport center consoles and and outboards. Sport boats are just kind of very limited right now. Pretty cool. Pretty cool if you're into multi-million dollar center console sport yachts, if that's what you call it. I don't even know what you call it. <laughs> It's definitely big. Let's so get perspective here. Yeah, cigarettes going all in on outboard center consoles. They make one model inboard center console and sport boats they still make, but they're very, very limited. Here's the 39 GTS up close. That's my favorite center console cigarette. Four hundred Verados. Those are the non-racing ones. They're very similar. They just have a different rev limiter and just not quite as high output. And they don't have the solid mounts, but they're very similar. Should go really good. I just like it because it's so much sleeker. The other ones only has a ten-foot beam too, which is nice. The 41 cigarette Nighthawk. This is actually uh, an awesome color. I love this. It's like a, I think they call it China blue. It's like a kind of grayish blue and it's no graphics, which I love. Same with this 42 here is they got a really nice dark metallic paint job with no graphics. I love that. Just super clean. The Nighthawk has uh, quad 450R, so. I think it does mid 80s, they said, mid to high 80s, with 15 of your closest friends. Fortune's even bigger. That's a really beamy, really high profile boat. I think the, f yeah, 67 inch freeboard, so it's a really high boat. If you look at the GTS beside it, this is the 39 GTS, my favorite actually, because it's lower profile. That's a nice boat, 10 foot beam. Looks good. There's that blue. Looks pretty sick. I think it's called China Blue. Very cool color. Closer look at the skater 368. It's got a real beam, really wide beam, the 368. Looks like a big boat from here. Really love that alt, just pure white. Looks like kind of an off white, but it's just really clean. That's my style. So the running surface is 36, so that's why it kind of looks, you can see actually below the waterline there, the step, the notch there I should say, and the transom there. So theoretically it's probably like a 37, 38 actually when you measure it out. 
um, even bigger. But it's uh, 10 by 10 beam is huge. You can see from here, it's just a, it's a beast of a boat. I'm sure it's super fast though, so no worries there. There's uh, G-Force, the 438 sca uh, skater, and it's got the 1550s. Looks pretty clean. Kind of a classic skater look to it with that those graphics, name on the side. Interior is pretty awesome. Get a close shot of the engine bay here. It's 1550s. Clean rigging. Wow. You can see those knees. There's Outer Limits, Liquid Prozac, Twin 860s, Custom Paint obviously. And this is the SC46. It's a full carbon fiber build. It's a 12 foot beam, it's a huge boat. Looks like a Lambo, doesn't it? It's got a Lam Lamborghini back. This thing looks pretty, pretty serious. Those are the 1550 Mark Racing engines in there. This thing will be uh, insanely fast. Here's the MTI booth. Matched for 50 Rs. Interior is pretty awesome. Is the 390X. It's really long. You can see it beside the 340 there. It's a big boat. Pretty clean paint job on this 34, 340X. Cockpit's amazing. I know, but I thought they were like we were here in 2018 because I come here every two years.
So there's the Fountain Cat with uh, twin 450s now. They actually changed the boat from the original 32 Thundercat. They extended the hull a little bit, changed a few things. The cockpit layout's really cool in this one. It has four captains and a bench in the back, which I think is really smart. Paint job looks pretty sick. I gotta say, it wasn't like my favorite sport cat in the market necessarily, but it looks really cool. And this one looks like they made the right changes and and build quality's higher. Uh, looks really good. They up the ante, that's good. You see that seating layout? I think that's actually really smart. Four passengers are like totally protected by the windshield. They improved the dash. The one I rode in at the Sport Cat Roundup a couple years ago was more like almost like a prototype. This one's way more finished off. That red looks sick. Fountain leaving. There's the uh, reincarnated Donzi ZRC. Looks pretty cool. I like the color. It's awesome. There's the ZRC Donzi. It's got an awesome color. Love that. The way the center console or the the console is it might be tricky to get into those seats, but this is kind of like a narrow, pretty serious sport boat. So looks fantastic. He's always looked good. Swing at a better angle. Yeah, that's a sick looking boat. I love those windshields. They had those on back in the day on uh, a bunch of different models. Looks really cool. And here's the Donzi GT. That's been a sale on maroon paint. Looks good though. Again, not a big fan of the seating in here, but I like the concept of the boat in general. Guys, we're looking at the uh, Don Z GT here, triple 400 racing engines, Atlas jack plates. Got the rear lounge seats, and we have uh, not a fan of these captain's chairs on pedestals. Doesn't look too good. Kind of a cool boat though in some ways. If they, if they figured out the interior, it'd be kind of cool. Here's the uh, right performance display. 360 there and the 420 there. That 360 looks pretty cool. That's a nice paint job. Thirteen fifty dual calibration, eleven hundred. You see these in the boats, and you don't appreciate how big these are until you see it in person. It's just a monster. It's a nine liter V eight.
And there's the new 450R cutaway. You can see how compact the supercharger is. This thing's not really bigger than the 300R cowling. I just squeeze it in there. has the advanced midsection that the Varados have, but it's beefed up, I believe. Although it doesn't have solid mounts. It's just really beefed up. This is a big seller for Mercury Racing 300R. This is sort of the a sweet spot for them. 300 horsepower fits a lot of boats. Single engine, twins, super versatile. The 450 is cool, but it's nice to have a naturally aspirated engine like this. It outsells the 250R about 10 to 1, apparently. So you get a lot, a lot of bang for your buck. It's a big gear case, wow. It's the larger Sportmaster. Wing plate. Very cool engine. Okay, let's get a little close-up of the uh, new 60R, the Racing 60. Pretty cool engine. So this gear case is actually from the 90 to 115, and it's the 4.88 inch gear case, they call it which is used in a variety of other engines too. So, 233 gear ratio. They actually have this Spitfire prop that's kind of made for this boat. They're kind of shooting for the flats boats, the little backwater fishing boats kind of. Um, so we can run a little bit bigger prop, which is kind of nice. They upped the ante on the rev, so it revs a 6,300 RPM. I think it weighs 260 pounds or 264 but it might be a little heavier with that gear case either way it's uh, it's kind of cool I like it you could be you could probably change that ratio too I think you can use that 208 ratio gear set if you want to modify it I believe it has solid mounts it's a 15 inch mid so that's a cool engine if you have a little boat maybe they could do that to a 150 and a 225 v6 too just to just for fun And this is a unique Spitfire propeller they made just for this little four blade. Here's the 175 V6 Pro XS. That's a nice repower engine. It's priced well. It has a low water pickup, but the 185 gear ratio, 470 pound engine. Pretty cool. Here's a little shot. You can kind of see the four-cylinder, and then there's the V6, and then the V8 in the background. But the four-cylinder is quite a bit smaller than the uh, V6. It only weighs about 30 or 40 pounds less, depending how you're weighing it. But uh, I do like the dynamics of the four-cylinder. This looks a little more normal. Well, the new one's kind of growing on me, but it is really big, especially when it's kind of. The front's narrow and then it expands out to the back, so it's deceiving a bit. Some new props from Mercury Racing. We got the uh, round tip cleaver. We got a 12 degree racing prop. So a couple new cleavers. Here's the uh, Max 5 ST they came up with last year. They're always working on something.
Here is a three-cylinder G2. That's the 140. Looks like a 25-inch model. Oh, white. Looks pretty cool in white, for sure. It's very small. It's kind of fat, but it's small in general. I got some custom cowlings on the other G2s here. Here's a 300 with a pretty specific cowl there for someone. I don't know. There's a 150. Looks like maybe a 115 HO. Yeah. Well priced. They didn't actually change the prices on these. They're with the same price as the outgoing E-Tech, as far as I know. It's a 250. Looking good. Got to say, after having one for a while, these are growing on me as far as the looks. Like this one looks badass. Look at that black. It's like an orange stripe. Looks pretty cool. Okay, so one thing I didn't mention on the what is new, there's a bunch of new features that are kind of hidden on this, but one is the panel. So this hard panel here is smooth now. It's a different plastic. There was issues before with the, the textured plastic in the heat. Not a huge problem. It, wouldn't, it wasn't a major uh, factor, but they changed it. It actually looks better. It's kind of shinier now all around, so it actually looks slicker. I like it. kind of a cool 90 it's the 90 no, vmax no, no, sho it's 355 pounds and it's um very similar to the 115 it's a little bit lighter though it's a few things about it that are different I'm not sure if the 115 is a single overhead cam this is a single overhead cam might have a lighter flywheel lighter other things but yeah it's pretty cool 355 pounds i think it's not bad in this day and age although it's definitely not the lightest 90 out there, but that's pretty cool. Here's the rest of the Yamaha lineup. There's a 200. Four-cylinder 200, F200. Ah, here's the the SHOs. This one's actually the the sweet spot for the four cylinders. 175 has a 186 gear ratio. It's 480 pounds, so that's probably the probably the best four cylinder on the market. I would say double rear cam, 6,000 RPM. If you're repowering like an older 150 or 200, that's probably the way to go. I would say, especially if you like Yamahas. If not, it's Merc all the way, obviously. <clears throat> There's the 150. Has a 2... 2.0 gear ratio, so it's a little different than the 175, but... The big SHO 4.2 V6. Thing looks like it weighs a thousand pounds, but it's actually... 505 or something like that. Pretty pretty nice engine. Man, even when you see these on a boat, they don't until you stand beside one, you don't realize how big these things are. It's just ridiculous. Actually, a really nice looking gear case. I like that torpedo shape. Five point six liter. Wow. 
Just fucking insane. The new Yamaha XDO offshore outboard was. It's a Jaguar 43 cat. Fairly narrow cat. Twin 627 7 Marines. You got the Volvo branding on them. Hmm. Looks pretty cool. Hey guys, so yeah, the Miami Boat Show, I'm probably uh, taking off today. It was actually a little bit quiet in general. The weather was really good overall, but the uh, crowd didn't seem huge, but I was here Thursday, Friday, so it's a little slower than the weekend, but saw some cool stuff. Nothing earth shattering, some, you know, I would say the highlights were, I mean, the cigarette display is always great, and they had that really cool blue 41 Nighthawk. The AMG edition Tirana, eh, whatever, same as last year's Tirana basically, had a few updates and a few things to it, but I'm not crazy about those kind of boats, they're uh, pretty boring to me, but uh, so no sport boats from them, but uh, just those two smaller center consoles, the 42 Oris, I think it's called, and uh, yeah, so there's that, there's a, this, the 60R from Merc Racing was pretty cool, Evernerd had the updated cowlings and had their new three-cylinder on display. Uh, nothing really new from Yamaha. Didn't see anything. I didn't really investigate too hard, but everything I saw in the thing was the same as usual. Um, nothing else to report, really. You know, like, Mystic had a nice 38, 450R powered cat, but it was the same as the one they make the last year. Uh, I forget what they call it, 3800 or something like that. And uh, MT had a great display. Skater had that awesome 368 white one. That was That's a really cool boat. Um, yeah, right, Performance had a 420, their, and their 360 was painted up really cool. Uh, oh yeah, MTI did have their bigger, their 30, uh, my brain's not working, I think it's a 38. Yeah, I'll double check on that, but um, overall, yeah, really fun show, good to see everyone. And um, a lot of accessories, I included in some videos with the accessories, but other than that, there was nothing, nothing huge and nothing super exciting in the sport world. Unfortunately, uh, there's just less and less people interested in some of the sport boats that Wave to Wave's interested in. And uh, there's a few out there, but they're so niche market, they're not gonna be at a show like this anyway. This is a big show. Big boat shows are expensive to be in. Not everyone can be at that. So the small builders, independent builders, they're just not gonna be in a show like this. And that's cool. It's good to see some of the other ones. So we're gonna look at some other boats, like some center consoles and uh, fishing boats, because that's kind of what's out there. And there's some, there's some neat stuff. So we'll take a look at that. And, yeah.